Miss Betty, there's five benefits to the types of policies that we sell that my clients love. I'm a, I'd love to share them with you real quick if that's okay. That's a trial close. That's engagement. She's gonna, they're going to say yes. That's one question. What we're going to do is we're going to tally, though, we're going to tally together the amount of questions. Uh, you know what? I'm going to even call it trial closes just because that's really what, 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 what it is. I'm going to tally the amount of trial closes that we use during this section, and we've got one so far. So I'll immediately say, okay, and I'm, going to write, I'm writing this down on a piece of paper when I'm sitting with them. And, and during this, I'll need to add that I want to be in their bubble, in their space. If we're at the table, I want to go sit beside them. If they're on the, sitting in a, if they're on the couch, I want to sit beside them. If they're in a recliner, I want to go kneel on the floor beside them. I want to be in their space, in their bubble, while I'm showing them these five benefits. So I'll say, okay, let's walk through these five benefits. Miss Betty, benefit number one is a whole life, and you can make any of these up no matter what product you sell, doesn't matter. You could say, well, Cody, I sell term life insurance. Perfect. Coverage lock. So you could put whole life or you could put coverage lock. It doesn't really matter. You could even, you could, if you sell home and auto, Medicare, it doesn't matter. You can come up with benefits, right? You can come up with five benefits. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I write it down, then I explain it. Miss Betty, what that means is, is that it will last your entire life. Typically, with a lot of options out there, it'll either, it'll either change every year or go down when you're 65 or they'll cut it in half or it'll only last till age 70 or age 80. There's a lot of those things out there that you definitely don't want. What's awesome and what our clients love is that it lasts your entire life and never changes, never goes down. It's always the same amount. Everything we agree on stays the same forever. Is that important to you? Do you like that? That's a trial close. There's another one. And I'm going to do it after each one. Perfect. And she'll say, yeah, I really do like it. Okay. Well, the second benefit, Miss Betty, is the price lock. And the reason why that's so important is there's a lot of things out there. Like we talked about, you know, over the phone or through the mail or on the TV or, you know, online or in the newspaper that, that has price, that, that, that does not have a price lock. Most A lot of policies don't come with price locks. This one does because the price is going to be locked in for the rest of your life. It's never going to go up. It's always going to be the same and it'll never change. With a lot of policies, Miss Betty, the price will go either go up every year or every five years or it'll go up when you hit a certain age or 60. Just be, and I'll tell them, just because you can afford whatever today doesn't mean you can afford three times that later. You know what I mean? Is that important to you? Do you like that one? There's another trial close. You get them to respond every step of the way. Benefit number three, Miss Betty, is that it pays double, and again, you can make these up along the way, but these are the five I use, double in the event of an accident. So let's just say that, that you have $25,000 in coverage. If you were to pass away by an accident, then your family, your beneficiary, your daughter Susie that you talked about earlier would actually receive $50,000 in coverage. I'm assuming that that would probably be okay with you. Am I right? Yeah. That was a trial close, right? All right, Miss Betty, the fourth benefit is that it builds cash value, which is also really cool because it's like a savings account inside the policy. It accrues with interest and it grows. And should you ever need to take out a loan, it, you, you could and it's there. There's policies that don't come with this, but it's nice to know that it's at least available. We don't recommend you use it, but hey, it's your policy and it's there. So it's kind of cool to know that it's that this actually, your policy will have this in it. Is that, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Try to close number five already. And then benefit number five, Miss Betty, this one takes the longest. But I always tell them, hey, this is probably my favorite. I'm probably a little biased because I'm talking about myself right now. But Miss Betty, benefit number five is local agent, which means let's just say that you need that we do, that, that 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 you just buy from someone random, you know, through the TV or something, or through the mail. 
What do you think you need to do when you need to make minor changes or when you need to go change your bank account or your address or your beneficiary or your name or whatever? Generally, you've got to call a 1-800 number. You've got to wait on hold for a good while, maybe 40 minutes. Then you've got to, you know, sometimes you have to send emails and you have to do all these things. And it's just, it's just, it's just, it's kind of annoying, right? It's kind of a burden. So what's cool about us is if you ever need to do any of this, you'll pick up the phone and call my cell phone and I'll and I'll even snap my fingers I'll immediately fix that for you burden gone uh, but I'll but I'll even add a second layer to that one so I add one layer then I add a second layer miss Betty even more important than minor changes when the time that you when the time comes that you pass away and your daughter Susie it's time for her to collect on your policy she's got she, she's grieving your life she's got Generally, she would have, if she bought a random policy, she'd have to go through and call the 1-800 number again, wait on hold for a lot of time, talk to several different departments, get, get death certificates from the funeral home, and, and, then get, and then get claim paperwork sent to her in the mail, and then, and then take it and get it notarized and filled out, and, and then try to get all this stuff and get it sent back. And then weeks to months later, she'll, she, she'll eventually, hopefully, maybe get a check in the mail where what's nice to know is that if something, when something does happen, Susie, just like you can when you have changes, she picks up the phone, she calls my cell phone, and we take care of all of it for her, and we take the burden away because there's a lot going on. You've got, she's got family coming in, food, arranging a funeral, all these other things. It's so much easier if we just take care of it. Clients love that. We take that huge burden off of their family's shoulders. Do you like that one as well? Guess what? That's another trial close. That's number six already, and we're not even done. Number seven trial close is you got them, you got them to allow you to do benefits. You got them to pick and, and say yes, that it was important to them, or at least that they liked it for each one. And the way you word these questions, you can tell is really important. After you go through this, I'm going to ask another question, Miss Betty, of all five of these wonderful benefits, which one is your favorite? Which one do you like the most? Guess what? That's trial close number seven already. And if they say what, which you talked about eight million times in all these videos, if they say, I don't know, you ask a follow-up question, you say, well, hypothetically, if you had to choose, what would you say? Which one would you pick? And then they'll say, well, if I had to, I'd probably say the price lock or the local agent. Great. Those are both extremely important. There was seven trial closes before you've even showed options. Don't you think it's easier? Because what happens is you're getting them to make a decision. You're training Betty right now to make decisions every step of the way, seven times already. Throughout this last eight minutes, she's made seven different decisions and agreed and said it's important and she likes it and all these things. That's why trial closing is so important. Then immediately when I get done with this, I'll say, okay, perfect, Miss Betty. I've got three options for you. And I'll say it exactly like this because it works. I've got three options for you that I know you're going to like. I even know which one you're going to pick already before you even choose. But I'll let, I'll let you choose, okay? I'm going to show you these three and I need you to pick one and tell me which one you like the most. But before I show them to you, I want you to know that these three options that I'm about to show you come with all five of these benefits, especially the price lock and the local agent, which I know you loved. All right, but Miss Betty, I'm about to show you these and I want you to tell me which one you like. And then I'll flip the paper over and show it. Miss Betty, I've got 25,000 for 125. I've got 20,000 for $100. And I've got 15,000 for 75. Which of these three are you most comfortable with? That's the close. And then you shut up until they pick. And about 80% of the time, they pick the one in the middle. Why do I lay it out like this though? Because, and, and, then, and then when they choose, well, yeah, probably the 20,000. Okay, great. Let's, and then the, the, the next step is, you're, you're, what you say is, 
Perfect. Great choice. That's actually the one I thought you would pick. Now, let's see if we can get you approved. What's your full legal name? Or what's your address? Or your beneficiary is, is Susie. What's her date of birth? You know, just a question to move into the application and the qualification process. The reason I do it this way, though, is I, give th I always give three options. And I do it in descending order, if you can't tell. Because if you do it, and, you, and, and if, if you do it ascending order, and you write 15, 20, 25, and you do it in ascending order, when you tell it, when you show it to them in ascending order, it feels like, okay, I saw 15, that's good. And it feels like you, it, they're going to feel like you're trying to upsell them by showing them bigger options. Where instead, this way, you're showing them, hey, this is the best option, and it starts to feel like you're taking it away from them at the, and that the other options pale in comparison. And so that's why I like to show three options in descending order. I like to get them to choose, make a decision, and then I immediately move into the application. This was all about showing. It's about building value. It's about presenting options, and it's about closing and getting them to choose. This is my favorite. It'll probably be your favorite too. If you stick to this, if you apply this, if you practice this, you role play this, I promise it'll work. That's why trial closes are super important. Nine times, I would say about nine times out of 10, if you do this correctly, they'll pick. They will make a decision generally. If, if the relationship's there, if the value's there, and, and you've got enough trial closes along the way, they will end up making a decision. I promise it works. Can't wait for the next step, which is all about solidifying everything that we just talked about. Yeah, I want to transition to a couple little pieces to help you when you're running a Zoom, a Zoom cell. The first one is when you're confirming the Zoom and you're setting it up via an initial call to an appointment, I want to remind you, I want to give you a couple ideas. I want to give you a couple ideas for how to make sure and confirm that. There's a, there's a gentleman that I follow. His name's Nate. He's a buddy of mine. He, he, he had... What a 100% show ratio with his Zoom calls, 12 weeks in a row. They either showed up or they called ahead to let him know. Okay, so if, 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 if you, if, if, if you, if, if you want to know what that is, make sure you jump in comments because I'm about to give it to you. Okay, so what he did is when he was making calls, when he was making calls, he would let them know. He would ask a follow-up question, right? Would there be any reason, this is a lockdown close, by the way, would there be any reason why Friday at 2 o'clock would not work? That's a secondary question just to make them rethink the time they set, by the way. Uh, I think that's good. Okay. And what I would say if I'm in your shoes is I want to make sure because if you say you can be there and then you don't show up, my calendar is extremely busy. I can only help so many people. And if you show up and you take someone's spot and you don't show up, then that's one less family that I can't help, right? So I just want you to understand the severity. It's my job to help as many families as I can. And I wanna spend time with you, but if, we, if, if, if we're supposed to spend time together and something comes up, I just need you to let me know so that I can fill it with another family so that I can help another family. Is that good or is that good? And he, he doesn't get no-shows anymore, okay? Now, when you're running a Zoom, I want you to think about three things. Most people, when they run a Zoom cell and they don't get a cell, they typically, they typically missed out on building rapport. Rapport and the relationship matters. It's the most important part of this whole thing, right? It's more important than whatever we're pitching. So here's a three-step sales process when you're running a Zoom call. The first one is to focus on building rapport. When you get off and you did not make the sell, then either, either what you were offering was going to put them in a, better, in a worse situation or we didn't take time to build rapport. Number two, find a pain point. Find a pain point. Number three, offer a solution. Very simple, but if you don't start with rapport, if you build rapport enough, right, you find common ground, you build a relationship, they know, like, and trust you. Then, once you actually go start building rapport really well, they're gonna actually tell you the problem. They're gonna tell you the pain point. You won't even have to tell them, okay? So remember that, all right? I want to run through a couple things really quick as we transition to mindset and as I have two minutes left, okay? As we have two minutes left. 
Success is a decision. A lot of insurance agents fail because they say, I'm going to do this. And they say, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do this, but I'm going to start on Monday. I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do this later. We need, if it's good enough to do it tomorrow, it's good enough to do it now. Okay, as I move back to the mindset piece. Okay, as I move back to the mindset piece, I have a daily power five. Since I, gave it, since I, I was given a little more time, I'm going to share this. I have a daily power five, five things to do to start my day every single day. Number one, I wake up before 6 a.m. Daily power five, write these down. I wake up before 6 a.m. Okay, these, these are things I've been doing for two years that have helped me level up, right? Who doesn't want to level up, okay? Number one, wake up before six. Number two, number two is I want to get a good workout in. I want to get a good workout in because energy, I, I went to the ocean down there and swam because I'm training for an Ironman that's in Galveston, Texas in November 22nd. And I've got to swim in the ocean 1.2 miles, and then I got to bike 56 miles, and then I got to run 13.1 miles. So I was down in the ocean swimming, trying to train for this Ironman, right? That's energy. My energy is everything. If I didn't work out, if I didn't swim, my energy would suck right now. And I know that you know that when you're selling, you're doing one thing. You're selling conviction. You're selling certainty. You're selling an influence. You're selling persuasion. And if your energy is low, and you're not that exciting to talk to, and I hope you're having a great day, Miss Betty, then guess what? You're going to struggle to close deals. You are selling certainty. You're selling conviction, passion, your why. You're selling certainty. You're selling energy. Energy is everything. So number two, I work out. I work out because energy is everything. Okay, number three. Number three, I believe in learning and getting better every single day. I watch universities, videos, read books, listen to audio books, because I know that in the morning, my brain is the most palatable to get information in and to learn and to expand. And so I want to be learning every single day. You need to spend time learning every single day. I promise you, you won't notice it today, but you'll notice it seven days from now, 30 days from now, a year from now, two years from now. Once I started get actually like, cause we don't, I mean, because how, how, how many opportunities, how many AEPs of 2020 do we get? One. And I want to be the most focused and the most serious that I've ever been so that I have the greatest AEP I've ever had so that I, because you, you think about it, in 2021, do you want to have regrets that 2020 wasn't the best AEP you've ever had? Or that 2020, you didn't give your best effort? Or that 2021, or, or the 2020, you didn't take it as serious as you should have. Now is the time. You're right. It is a crucial piece to your success. And you need to focus on making 2020, 2020 AEP, the best you possibly can. Number four. Number four is to write my goals down every single morning. I've got some lofty goals. I want to help every insurance agent in the world. I want our companies to be worth over 100 million. I want to be like Coach Michael Bird and travel around on a freaking private jet. Okay? I want... I want, to have, I want to have hundreds of staff and team members. And I want to do everything I can to leave a legacy on the insurance business like nobody ever has. Okay, That's some of my goals. Now, I challenge you right now to say, dude, what, what, what are your goals? What are you writing down? What are you thinking about every day? Because when I wake up and I write these things down every single morning, I'm telling you, it puts me in the right frame of mind. It makes me humble and it gets me excited for the rest of the day, the rest of the week and the rest of the month. Okay. Every single time. And number five, I finished with a cold shower. Why? Because most people won't do the tough stuff. Most people don't want to do the things that are hard. They're scared to do it. I want to force myself to do the things that I don't want to do because when I operate in a place of fear outside of my comfort zone and I force myself to do stuff I don't want to do right on the other side of that something good starts to happen. If you love this and you're like, dude, I want a whole team of people doing this, seven secrets on building a scaling a sales team. It's right there, click on that, I'll see you there. All right, all right, all right, it is five o'clock. Welcome to seven secrets to scaling a superstar sales team. Super excited to be here tonight on Tuesday evening. Appreciate you guys signing up. I can guarantee you, 